my season's greetings, little beans, and welcome back for another spooky fun. I am your host, your favorite scary godmother, Allie Stitches. And yes, welcome back to the spooky month and spooky day for another scary story. I'm just kidding. We're not going to do another scary story. Just like the last video we did about the brief history of the Salem Witch Trials, I thought that we can do another brief history on a holiday. And what holiday would that be? Hmm. Well, it's definitely not Yule or Christmas. And no, it's not Thanksgiving or Valentine's Day. We're talking about my favorite holiday, Samhain. Now I know what you're all thinking. Mama, what is Samhain and what does it mean? It's actually a very easy question. It's another name from a pagan holiday as Halloween. And I guess to all the people out there that are saying Samhain and Halloween is a very satanic holiday and has everything to do with the summoning of Satan. <laughs> Oh, those people make me laugh. <laughs> Actually, someone has nothing to do with Satanism or summoning the devil himself. It's actually quite an interesting and mostly a magical holiday, and it has something to do with respecting the dead and letting the paranormal roam the earth for a final harvest. Well, how about we dive in into the history? one of my favorite holidays, and a beloved pagan holiday. And that is the history of Samhain, aka Halloween. Let's begin, shall we? Samhain, a Gaelic word pronoun, Samhain, is a pagan religious festival originating from an ancient Celtic spiritual tradition. It is usually celebrated from October 31st to November 1st to welcome in the harvest and usher in the dark half of the year. Celebrants believe that the barriers between the physical world and the spirit world break down during Samhain, allowing more interaction between humans and denizens of the other world. Ancient cells marked Samhain as the most significant of the four cordially fire festivals, taking place at the midpoint between the fall equinox and the winter solstice. During this time of year, hearth fires in family homes were left to burn out while the harvest was gathered. After the harvest work was complete, celebrants joined with druid priests to light a community fire using a wheel that could cause friction and spark flames. The wheel was considered a representation of the sun and used along with prayers. Kettle were sacrificed, and participants took a flame from the communal bonfire back to their home to relight their hearth. Early texts present Samhain as a mandatory celebration lasting three days and three nights, where the community was required to show themselves to local kings or chieftains. Failure to participate was believed to result in punishment from the gods, usually illness or death. There was also a military aspect to Samhain in Ireland, with holiday thrones prepared for commanders of soldiers. Anyone who committed a crime or used their weapons during the celebration faced a death sentence. Some documents mention six days of drinking alcohol to excess typically mead or beer, along with gluttonous feasts. Because the Celts believed that the barrier between worlds was breachable during Samhain, they prepared offerings that were left outside villages and fields for fairies or Siths. It was expected that ancestors might cross over during this time as well, and Celts would dress as animals and monsters so that fairies were not tempted to kidnap them. Some specific monsters were associated with the mythology surrounding Samhain, including a shape-shifting creature called a puka that receives harvest offerings from the field. 
The Lady Gwen is a headless woman dressed in white who chases night wanderers and was accompanied by a black pig. The Dullahan sometimes appeared as image creatures, sometimes headless men on horses who carried their heads. Riding flame-eyed horses, their appearance was a death omen to anyone who encountered them. A group of hunters known as Slo, or Fairy Host, may also haunt Samhain and kidnap people. Similar are the Slo, who would come from the west to enter houses and steal souls. One of the most popular Samhain stories told during the festivals was of the Second Battle of Magturid, which portrays the final conflict between the Celtic Pathion, known as the Tuatha de Danann, and evil oppressors, known as a farmer. The myth states that the battle unfolded over the period of Samhain. One of the most famous Samhain-related stories is the adventures of Nera, in which the hero Nera encounters a corpse and fairies and enters into the other world. Samhain figured into the adventures of mythological Cedric hero Fionn MacCumhill when he faced the fire-breathing underworld dweller Aelin, who would burn down the Hall of Terra every Samhain. Samhain also figures into another Fionn MacCumhill legend, where the hero is sent to the land beneath the wave, as well as taking place on Samhain. It features descriptions of the hero's holiday gathering. As the Middle Ages progressed, so did the celebrations of the fire festivals, bonfires known as Somnegons, which were more personal Samhain fires nearer the farms, became a tradition purportedly to protect families from fairies and witches. Carved turnips called jack-o'-lanterns began to appear, attached by strings to sticks and embedded with coal. Later, Irish tradition switched to pumpkins. In Wales, men tossed burning wood at each other in violent games and set off fireworks. In Northern England, men paraded with noisemakers. The tradition of dumb supper began during this time in which food was consumed by celebrants, but only after inviting ancestors to join in, giving the families a chance to interact with the spirits until they left following dinner. Children would play games to entertain the dead, while adults would update the dead on the past year's news. That night, doors and windows might be left open for the dead to come in and eat cakes that had been left for them. As Christianity gained a foothold in pagan communities, church leaders attempt to reframe Samhain as a Christian celebration. The first attempt was by Pope Boniface in the 5th century. He moved the celebration to May 13th and specified it as a day celebrating saints and martyrs. The fire festivals of October and November, however, did not end with this decree. In the 9th century, Pope Gregory moved the celebration back to the time of the fire festivals, but declared it All Saints Day on November 1st. All Souls Day would follow on November 2nd. Neither new holiday did away with the pagan aspects of the celebration. October 31st became known as All Hallows Eve, or Halloween and contained much of the traditional pagan practices before being adopted in the 19th century's America through Irish immigrants bringing their traditions across the ocean. Trick-or-treating is said to have been derived from ancient Irish and Scottish practices in the nights leading up to Samhain. In Ireland, mumming was the practice of putting on costumes, going door to door, and singing songs to the dead. Cakes were given as payment. Halloween pranks also have a tradition in Samhain, though in the ancient celebration, tricks were typically blamed on fairies. A broad revival of Samhain's resembling its traditional pagan form began in the 1980s with the growing popularity of Wicca. 
Wicca celebration of Samhain takes on many forms, from the traditional fire ceremonies to celebration that embraces many aspects of modern Halloween, as well as activities relating to honoring nature or ancestors. Wiccans look at Samhain as the passing of a year and incorporate common Wiccan traditions into the celebration. In the Druid tradition, Samhain celebrates the dead with a festival on October 31st and usually features a bonfire in communion with the dead. American pagan often hold music and dance celebrations called witches, balls, and proximity to Samhain. Pagans who embrace Celtic traditions with the intent of reintroducing them faithfully into modern paganism are called Celtic Reconstructionists. In this tradition, Samhain is called Oik Shamnya and celebrates the mating between Tuatha de Danann, God's Dagna, and River Umis. Celtic Reconstructionists celebrate by placing juniper decorations around their homes and creating an altar for the dead where a feast is held in honor of deceased loved ones. <laughs>